Hello friends, I just got five minutes into recording this and realised I hadn't pressed record. So, here we go again. We are of course reviewing the MD-11 by Rotate, also known as the Mad Dog. We've got the FedEx livery going and you're going to be joining me for a flight from New York JFK to Washington Dulles International. It is a cargo only plane, so it does come with a whole bunch of liveries, I think about 10 but they are all cargo liveries, probably the most two or three you're going to use are FedEx, UPS, and then there's a bunch of others uh, from, you know, lesser well-known. Uh, we'll, we'll call them Lufthansa Cargo is, is the other big one, I think. Um, okay, so there is that. There have been so many updates to this aircraft since I last did a video on it. I've not flown it since there having been all of those updates that I really thought... This isn't just a flying the module video, it's sort of a review as well. Last time I flew it, there were serious difficulties with using the autopilot to manage the energy and some of the energy thrust settings at certain flight regimes were a little questionable. What that means when it was at home was it wasn't that realistic in that regard. So I'm looking forward to bringing this one. The changelog was so long that came out recently and at least half of the changes were to do with the way that the engines worked, the way that the autopilot worked, the way the nav system worked and how all of those interlinked. I think they basically said they redid the whole autopilot. So I look forward to bringing you that. Jumping inside then real quick. I'm going to do away with the camera today just because of the, the lighting in a bit. So uh, you'll just have to... Uh, Make do, I'm sure many of you won't mind me ugly mug vanishing. Big change here, we've got use of a side tablet. I like to call it the Avi tablet. As you can see, it's not really, it's their own one with a whole bunch of customizations. Hopefully it does have Avi tab integration. We'll take a look at that. As you can see on the home page, there's actually a whole bunch of options. I've taken the liberty to just tick a couple of these before we started. But as you can see, standard module uh, options. Nice to see that they've finally gotten this into a tablet. Also allows you, uh, looks like, from cold and dark to a ready for departure. So different sort of, I assume, uh, states of cockpit readiness. And so we're going to go with this. Uh, flight for today, as we said, is uh, New York. So that's in the upper right hand side of the screen uh, to Washington Dulles, which is right here where my finger is. So, yeah. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, let's come back to the uh, sim. For those of you unfamiliar with the Mad Dog, you've never flown one, the MD-80 or like this, the MD-11. Think Airbus and Boeing, bedroom, nine months later. I realise the analogy don't quite work because it's sort of back to front. This is an older aircraft uh, than the more modern Airbus and Boeings. But if you could ignore that slight... Uh, oversight in the in what I'm trying to say is basically that slightly more Airbus than Boeing mainly and um, so let's go ahead make a start so I've got my controls set up there and so first off coming here on the left hand side uh, I'm going to look for the ground operations panel again this is my first time flying since the update so anything that jumps out at me as an improvement or better I will mention, and certainly this tablet is a big improvement. Ground power unit. Request. Not immediately hearing a loud sound. Let's uh, jump to the outside. There we see the GPU. I mean, I do find some modules have the GPU far too loud. Never understood what that is, but... Uh, for some reason, some are just far too loud. Actually, this one doesn't really seem to have a sound to it at all. We do have the uh, ambient airport sounds, which is, again, not really to do with the MD-11. I always like it when you see the engines, you know, the, the, uh, the fan at the front there rotating in the breeze. And, of course, number two up top. All right, so with uh, I'm going to have to rebind that button because number nine I always used for the tablet unless there wasn't one. And seeing as we do, let's set that here and now. So control nine. Right, ground power is set. Let's go ahead, cockpit stairs, just so we see what it looks like. 
Uh, fuel services. So here we go. Let's open the cockpit door. Left side, seeing as that's where the stairs seem to be. Uh, we'll go ahead, open all the cargo doors, uh, cargo lights, depending uh, ground service bus. Well, we haven't uh, yet. So, in fact, let's go ahead with this. So, battery on. Uh, we've actually got a uh, battery cover switch here. Um, that I'd already opened, uh, to be fair. So, we'll close that one. Uh, emergency power on standby, or arm as they call it. External power is available because we just asked for it, so we'll click that on. And with it, we are jumping to life. Okay, so I'm just going to do this while seeing as we're here. So nav systems one, two, and they call it the auxiliary. I'm going to call it number three. That initiates the auto check. You've got the uh, smoke things. So that, again, that for, for such an old aircraft... There is a lot of automation in this one. And all of these systems we'll take a quick look at in a bit for those that are new. I'm just going to wind my lighting up so you've got the... Uh, you've got sort of two stages here. You've got the, the, the fatter knob and the thinner one. Um, the fatter one I like, you know, is basically your panel light and your back lighting as you see there. And the thinner one is more like your, your typical dome lighting or your flood lighting. Um, so again, yeah, we'll just dial up the the fatter of the lot across the board. And we'll take it from there. All right. Again, most of this is automated. So I think we can leave it uh, for now. Coming down here on the emergency lights. That's always a good one. Smoking signs on because we're about to fuel and do all of that. And logo light on. Now, the whole lighting system here is a little bit weird until you get used to it. So, you may think, well, you need to turn the nav lights on because well, it doesn't look like they're on. But you press it and it's actually the nav only lights up when it's off. Um, beacon, you see, has an off light. So, you press that to turn it on. Um, high intensity, you see, has got an off light as well. And the runway turn off lights... Uh, are on when they're on and off when they're off which kind of makes sense but again that's why the nav switch at least to me feels so backwards way on but once you get your head around that that's fine um so the way i would uh look at this is well yeah it's basically things are on unless they say off with the exception of uh the nav one where for some reason, that is the one switch that's back to front. Okay, so last, we're on the right-hand side here. Your damper's cabin pressure. Uh, defog, which is, uh, I think, like your... It's a little bit like anti... Well, it's defog, isn't it? It's, uh, we'll press that one. It's not quite the same as anti-ice, but... The thing that's in your cars. The demister, that's what I'm trying to say. Right, so that's that one done. Master caution. Uh, we've got the standby artificial horizon here, which you do need to manually uh, plug that one in at the start of each flight. And we do have three, and there are many modules that have three independent FMCs or McDo's. This one does, and they are legit three. So you've got left, right, and uh, this one back here. Right, so let's take a look at the flight plan then with regards to this. Um, it's like we've got a failures thing. Uh, man. Oh, aircraft manuals. Okay. Not the same as charts, which we've got here. Maps. So this is going to be... Ah, uh, does not. Okay, is just literally uh, maps does at least have access to the Navigraph um, side of things, so that's great. We'll have to see. Charts. Again, that's your flight plan. Airports page. Oh, great. does have one. Hey, I'll tell you what. I'm a big fan of this. Maps airports page on a separate tab, allowing you quickly to access the two. Normally, every module combines this on Avitab, and you sort of got to go back and out when you're trying to switch to just literally have a tab like this big big fan thank you so you can see the frame rate 
this aircraft is a little rougher on frames than most. I'm down to 30. I do usually play with 60. Um, the fact that I'm in New York, and again, auto-ortho scenery doing its thing will uh, allow that. Some of you may say you're streaming as well. Yeah, but regardless of that, it's usually 60. Let's just get JFK loaded up while we're here. And we'll come over to the old airport. Uh, as I like to say, 10-9, but in this case, it's the 20-9. The Either way, it's the dash 9. So we're over here at the uh, FedEx cargo stands, which is great because we are in the uh, FedEx aircraft. All right, back to the charts then. I've got to ignore departure time because <laughs> it's probably already, yeah, it's already 20 past 6 as uh, I'm doing this. Uh, we should have been uh, taking off according to this chart right now, so that's not happening. What I am going to do is get the loadout. So block fuel, we are 36.6, let's call it. And if we come over to page three, we've got the loadout as well. I still find there's a little bit of a bug with my SIM toolkit where if I set passengers to zero, it treats it as, all right, well, I'll automatically generate you a number then. And it gives me a ridiculous number that a cargo plane couldn't carry. So I manually set myself to have one passenger, which, you know, whatever, right? We can just ignore that or treat it as like some guy on the jump seat, whatever. Um, so uh, payloads. And again, this is uh, including this one guy, 134.6, 134.7. Uh, so we'll go with 134.7. Uh, plus uh, 36.6. So I'm just going to make a quick note of that. 36, 6. And I've already forgot. I'll tell you what, memory like a sieve, man. It's not usually that bad. But uh, 134, 7. There we go. 134, 7. Right. Coming then over to, I guess it's Wumba for weight and balance. So, payload. So, here we go. So, well, I, do I just drag the slider? Yes, we do. And 130. I guess we can type as well to get it more precise. Yes, we can. 134 and we'll go 721 just because. I like the way that you can modify the CG. That's great. And block fuel, we've got 36.6. So, we'll go with... Uh, put that on the nose. There we go. This, to me, I find this a little weird um, where it wants to know how much are we going to use for taxi. I guess it's so the thing can basically confirm your takeoff weight while you're still at the gate because, well, you're going to lose, what, five, six hundred pounds depending on how long you've got to wait to get there. Let's just go with 600 for the for the sake of argument. And so we'll be taking off, I guess, with 36,000 pounds. Ballast fuel. So I think this is an option. Basically, you can put a basically a fuel tank actually in the cargo bay and use that to extend your range. We're not going to do that, but you can do that. You could already do that. It's just a case of dropping it down and then how much fuel do you want? Um, enter trip fuel to compute and check landing weight. So this is how much you are supposed to be using um, according to your uh, charts. I, I believe it was around half, so I'm just going to put 18,000 in for the sake of sparing time. Clearly, you'd want to, especially if you're operating near the limits, get that right. Now, take a look at this. Zero fuel CG is fine. So you can see in terms of maximum weight, we're well in. The reason there's two lines is there's a takeoff and a landing. Yeah, you can take off a much heavier weight than you can do land. But the CG is slightly outside the acceptable range. Um, if we did have to come straight back, you can see the takeoff here. We are okay. But if we had to come straight back, it's right on that line. And so if we move the uh, payload CG, we can actually... Uh, improve this somewhat and be a little more fuel efficient, I think, anyway. Uh, they generally say slightly to the aft. Um, I think we'll go uh, somewhere like that. Okay, let's apply load and click. There is still that jolt. You know what I think of that? I prefer a more gradual load. Whether, it, you, whether you take 10 seconds to do it or two minutes or you have, like, an option for instant uh, 10 seconds or a more realistic... That's, I don't know. 
20 minutes or whatever, at least have the option. That sudden jolt, again, just a personal thing. Right, that's all in. Uh, let's take a look at planning the route then. So we'll switch this over to plan mode. I'm just going to turn the light off, guys, and my camera with it. Uh, so if I turn the, uh, the the light off, you see I'm a little bit dim. Some of you may say, yeah, we know. Yeah, dim. Dim as. Yeah, so there we go. And let's switch. Uh, let's have a look. Can we? Yes, we can. So we can put the charts on here. So this is just so that we don't got to get a headache as we keep looking around. So in terms of planning the flight, let's come over to FMC1. Uh, flight plan. I'm just going to clear that message out. I'm not sure if you can load in a route. I think you could. But you know what? Seeing it is, it is a very short flight and there's only one waypoint. That's Robbinsville VOR. I think we can uh, type this in ourselves. So Kilo, Juliet Fox, Kilo to... Kilio, Kilio, <laughs> India Alpha Delta. All right, there we go. Alternate today is. Um, where are we? Page two. Pittsburgh, Kilo, Papa, India, Tango. Bang. All right. Uh, flight number. Well, we are rocking the FedEx, but I think we're going to go with the classic internet flight rules. And as I hit record, we had 881, and so 881 it is. And that's also uh, reflected up there, 881. So all the subscribers have a seat. Uh, those of you that aren't subscribers yet, ring the thing, and then you will next time. <laughs> That's cheeky, if ever there was. All right, so pause in it. That's there. Cruising, so we'll come back to page one. Flight level 320. So we'll bang that in. Uh, seen as there are no steps, that's all that there is. Cost index, apparently 72, which is quite high. I suspect there's why we're battling a... A bit of a headwind, 55 knots, as it were, the average wind component. So no wonder we've got a higher than normal cost index given to us. Next page. Uh, these are weights and so on. So this has been auto-completed based off what we filled in on the tablet. So you can see there, uh, 600 pounds for taxi and so on. Uh, block 36.6. Okay, page three. More fuel stuff, uh, dump time. So I guess if you're looking to do a fuel dump, this is the page you'd want to be on to see those sort of numbers. Actually, something I've never done before in this aircraft. Uh, we'll have to take a look at some point. All right, so that's a flight, or, or at least the init page done. Um, so flight plan then. And we do just have the solitary waypoints. As we said, the rest of it is uh, Arrival, the Hyper 8. And it is Robin's Rule, RBV. So we'll plug that in. And clearly, 43 miles or 7,194. It's probably the one that's 43 miles away, right? And then the Hyper 8 onto runway 19 center, seen as I am doing this offline. I like to do with these little reviews. That'll be what it is. Uh, so Hyper 8 on light Airbus. I like this. It lets you fill out either side first, just like the Boeing. So you can choose your star first or the runway or, or amalgamate the two. Let's go for Hyper 8 and then look for um, the I, which is, I guess, short for ILS in this aircraft, uh, 19 Center. So there we go. And there's a bunch of transitions here. I'm on the left side. We're, of course, coming from Robbinsville. So that would be the suitable transition. And then over on the other side. Uh, we're going to have to have a quick look. Forgive me, guys, because I'm not familiar with the uh, airports. We're going to have to see how do we sew the arrival and the approach together. So arrival, 
is the Hyper 8. That can take us to, well, from Robbinsville to Lancaster. Uh, that then continues on through. And then we've got four options, it would seem. Uh, I beg your pardon, two, two options. Uh, Mike, Tycon... So how do we know which one we need? Let's scroll through ILS. Actually, there is nothing else. That would appear that that's it. That it, it, it does seem to be... I must have missed something somewhere because... Uh, you know, which one of these are we going to be given? So let's have a look through. Hoser, Disco, and Ed. Holzer, Hyper, there we go, through the central one, okay, the, 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 uh, McDoers somehow picked the, 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 the suitable one, Holzer, how it knew, as you can see there, we've got, uh, three options here, We've also got a further two on the other side. It seemed to know that for 1-9 center, which is exactly right, that's the one to pick, Hoser. So I'm impressed there, especially Cedars. It didn't actually give me the options to pick between them. So the fact it did so automatically is great. I guess we can just clear out that disco. But rather than guess, I'm just going to check now. Because, of course, a big part of this is that previously the autopilot really struggled to get you down. And that was what they were talking about. So one nine uh, center. Here we go. Don't need to worry about the cat. So there's Hoser. That's what our arrivals bringing us into. And there's a Ned. Uh, there are actually uh, Boyd's and RK in between them. Uh, those are missing. So I guess maybe there was some sort of uh, option with Boyd somewhere. I didn't. It didn't leap out at me. But regardless. I'm just going to go from Holzer straight to Ened. And as you can see, there's about 2,300 feet to lose. So we'll clear out that disco. And like that, we got ourselves a plan. Incidentally, there is no departure uh, from JFK that takes us to Robbinsville. It will be uh, Radar Vectors, a.k.a. We're freestyling it. And so with that, Let's get rid of uh, Washington for now. JFK, let's ask uh, what the weather's doing. Oh, 128.72. No, nope. yeah, 128.725. We'll use your side. 128.725. Okay, so first off, huge fan that you can turn the radios on and off like this. You know, so many times I'm flying and I actually have to detune the radio. And the ability... Of course, there we go. Massive, massive fan. I mean, it seems such a simple thing, but you'd be surprised how many people forget about that. Three zero three niner arriving runway three one right two two left departing runway three one left two two right advise on initial contact you have information Victor. All right, so it's three one left or two two right for departure. It was a very high um, altimeter. Victor. Let's just grab that. Two seven zero degrees at niner knots. Visibility more than ten miles. Sky clear. Temperature five. Point minus five altimeter three zero three niner arriving runway three three zero three nine. There we go. Uh, so yeah, high pressure dominating over the city today. So with departure being three one right and two two left, if we just have a quick gander at the situation, see what's nearest. Uh, I think we'll take uh, two two right and. 12,000 foot, uh, 
Why not? 2-2 two, two right. And so the uh, takeoff heading is going to be 2-2-4 two, two, degrees. Uh, let's come to JFK SID. And 2-2 two, two, right. There we go. We do have access to the JFK and the DS5. Now, I believe the JFK departure is basically, basically they're in one. Um, so the Kennedy 5, as they call it. And as you see there, it's, um, well, various options. This one would be suitable for us, uh, the Breezy Point Climb. Uh, to Ranger, seeing as we are making our way to Robbinsville. Um, so let's just go with JFK 5, 2, 2, additional SIDS. Um, but yeah, in other words, if we, w we wish to switch, uh, which we don't. So the JFK 5 will bang that in. Not that that really means anything. It's, you know, in terms of the FMC, it's not like, oh, I know now we're going here, here, here. It's just, it, you know, it's just for us, really, because, of course, depending on which runway we're doing, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Yeah, so gateway climb to be assigned, breezy point climb. Looks like actually not suitable for us. Uh, looks like breezy point uh, is for 3-1 left or right, but regardless, gateway climb it is then to be assigned during the period, well, night time, climb right turn to intercept the JFK uh, 232 radial until 5 miles, then left turn 219. I'll tell you what, just because we'll we'll give it a whirl. I realise we are outside the operating hours, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, so, climbing right turn to intercept JFK 232. Let's have a quick look at that. So, JFK is 1590. Do we tune? I forget. Uh, was it automatic? Radios. Maybe we can select here. I think. Let's try 590 and 232. That's gone in. And then left turn 219 degrees. So we need to bag that by the time we're five miles away. ILS, just in case it all goes wrong, which it shouldn't do, but for the purposes of trying to be authentic. Two, two, right. 109.50. degrees. Boom. Code India Julia Oscar Charlie. So that's the top one. In it goes. Then says not allowed, even though it's accepted it. Whatever. That appears to be fine. Okay, we may as well put Robbinsville in the uh, other side, seeing as that's our first legit waypoint. Robbinsville 1380. And I guess we don't need a course, do we? We do. Well, it's just whether, however we get there. I'm just going to click in something like, well, what is this if we're heading southwest? Two, two, five, something like that. We'll go for, we'll go for two, three, zero. Again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's in. Um... Take off again. I'm looking for the different, but it don't quite work on this one, does it? Uh, so in it, we've got that's the basics. Performance page seems to be to do with uh, the, the climb and the cruise. Take off. Okay, so here we go. So I wonder if there's any more with regards to the uh, to the performance on this tablet or not. 
uh, roots, uh, uh, no data, no notes, no, not really, uh, at all, actually. Um, so, with that, we'll just go with uh, sort of pretty standard. So, flex, it's a long runway, so I'm just going to go with, let's go with 55. Uh, flap setting. We do, of course, have our wonderful dial uh, flap. So let's go with. Well, what's the default there? Looks like 15.2, or it certainly is now. Uh, so that will be our takeoff flap, 15.2 degrees. Stab, it reckons 5.8. Right. Slope is. Uh, let's just call it a flat runway. It's basically uh, flat. Uh, if we take a look here. So our end is 13 feet. At the far end is 12. So I'm just going to say it's flat. It's one foot over the entire length. Wind, if you remember, was a quartering headwind of about nine knots. That's why three, one left and two, two right were in operation. So as we view... It from here, basically, the winds are blowing from left to right across the screen. Um, and th the information for winds on this is kind of unique. It either wants to know the headwind, HD, or the tailwind, TW. Uh, so we'll go with HD. I think that's right. If not, it's just the H. And so if it's nine knots across the way, the quartering is going to be roughly six knots thereabouts. Uh, so let's try HD06. Is it happy with that? Yes, it is. There we go. And with it, we should be, once we have our outside air temperature in, which we see is just 6 degrees today, that should give us, is it 6 Charlies? Yes, it is. Here we go. Decision 126, rotate 48. And if we lose an engine, it's 56. And so with that... 156 is set. And I think you... Hang on, 156. Let's try that again. There's like a preset option. Perhaps I'm not quite there yet. We'll have to see. Okay. Runway heading is 224. So we'll get that one in. I do, by the way, big fan of the way that the mouse wheel works. It does let you spin these round awfully quick, as you can see. There's not worse than as, as spinning as fast as you like, and, it, and, you know, the dial's just, like, going like this or like this. You know, having the ability to literally go through 360 degrees in a second or two is great, and just slow your mouse wheel down, and you can be precise as you like. Big fan of that. Should be uh, the standard thing, I think. Right, that's that. We're loaded up. Let's go ahead and get the APU started then. So, over here, um, we do have the APU panel right at the top. There, but again, one of the nice features about the Mad Dog is the auto APU start. So, if we ask for APU power by clicking here, as you can see, it starts flashing, and if we take a look, it's automatically starting. Oh, well, there's the airport sounds are pretty loud. But you can probably hear that uh, APU winding up there, coming back inside. So again, nice touches that the automated feature. And as soon as we have that, we'll grab the APU bleed as well. systems will be aligned by now because of all this yapping but let's just 
confirm. We're coming over to the where are we here? Uh, menu. Uh, FMC two. Prog. Reference page. That's what I was looking for. So pause ref and here you'll see. We are aligned indeed, as you can see here, IRU 1, 2, and 3, they're all on and in nav mode. So that means we're good to cycle the power. And so APU power is on, external power is gone. APU bleed on. As you probably heard there, the... Uh, pack coming on as well air conditioning great all right all of that is set and looks like packs one and three coming on after a slight delay as well fantastic right i think we're about ready so 35 minutes after the start of the recording we are good for pushback looks like we've got a lot of caution lights here with regards to cargo doors um, so, we'll request pushback. Uh, Got to be careful that the uh, wing doesn't clip the wall there. Uh, so, we'll actually push back. Vaguely following the uh, taxi line, uh, we'll push back to... Tell you what. There we'll do, and then we'll power out towards the front. Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. We are ready. Ground to cockpit, tow is driving up. Okay, so while we wait for her to drive up, I'm sure, I'm sure I reset my view to be there. In any case, uh, ground operations, so we can get rid of the ground power unit, seeing as we've got our own in, we know, and we disconnected ground from the supply. Wheel chocks, I'm going to get rid of that because I'm not sure that the pushback does, and it could get nasty. Get rid of the, hang on, let's just have a little look at the stairs. There we go, so, yeah, nice to see the stairs are there, all the way up to the door. Still... That will be down to my controls. Right, so we'll dismiss the stairs. We will close okay. the cockpit door. All doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Easy, easy, easy. They're not quite yet. So, again, cargo lights, we never turn those on, but I guess if it's night time, as long as you've got the, uh, the ground power, it would appear that you can run those. And so with having pressed that, if we'll take a look here, we are good to go. And again, this caution light here, when the engines are up and running and you turn the parking brakes off, so both of those things need to be true, then you get rid of this caution light. It's, I don't know what it stands for, but it reminds me of the anti-skid switches in the uh, 747. You know, the only way to get the caution out is with the engine running and parking brake off. Uh, so that is all there, so I think we can go back to the... So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. We will do. So coming over here, min takeoff fuel is 34.5. Coming over to the air... Uh, the... Uh, where are we here? Charts. Airport page. Yeah, so... going to take me a minute or two to get used to this, but I really like having that ability there to, to switch between them. Great. All right, so that's there ready for taxi. We're ready for push, and so with it, beacon light goes on. Uh, pushing both pedals does not release the parking brakes, because, oh yes, yeah, this big clunky operation here, which I really like, so let's release. There we go. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. The, air, the aircraft uh, does default to the uh, 1776 Squawk. I actually got 883 subscribers now. We did start with 881. 
So what I'm going to have to do, because we can't obviously squawk the eight, is it's going to be 17 um, standby, yeah, transponder for ground. Um, clear. It's going to be 777, not 7700, but 777. Um, actually, clear. Zero. There we go. That's more like it. Until we get a thousand anyway, because we can't squawk any higher. Right. Engine start time. Back to uh, map mode. So, been a while since I've done this, but as far as I recall, we pick a side, so let's go with side A. Since it's been ages, we see the packs immediately conk out in the automated way that they do. You can go manual on all of these, by the way. So you see this system button in the top right. You basically press that, you can go manual, and then you can change any of these around the way that you like. That's just going to cool the temp down a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and start engine number two. And release. And that's going to be this one. Looks like we got a good ignition. Back inside. EGT stabilizing. And well, we're still climbing, so I like that. That's that's you know how how you'd expect it to be in the final seconds. EGT there stabilizing together with N1. Great, the orange light's gone off, so let's go ahead and port start number three. Release. Might as well put the fuel on ready for number one as well. You can only uh, have one engine starting at a time, so only one of these orange lights. If you try and uh, pull on a second, it just won't, it won't let you. Fuel going in. going to be a good start there as soon as the orange light disappears you can start the next engine so you don't really need to wait for it to stabilize it just needs to be you know well ignited let's call it like that well on the way So this is going to be a uh, non-LNAV VNAV takeoff, as it were, because we are vectors. And then following the instructions here, so we'll turn that icon off. But basically, uh, we were told, so just to remind ourselves, it's the uh, gateway climb. We had to climb on heading 224, which is in there. That's runway heading. And... Uh, then right turn to intercept the JFK 232 radial until we're five miles away and then turn left 219. I just wonder if we can put that fix in. Um, does that actually appear on the VOR? We did tune it in. It's actually got uh, LaGuardia tuned in, LGA. Um, I need... Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Okay, let's set the parking brake. Disconnecting tail. Stand by. Engines 1, 2 and 3 are on, so with that, APU bleeds can disappear, as can the APU power, and with that, uh, the shutdown sequence for the APU should initiate. 
put the signs on for what it's worth. It's a cargo aircraft, but uh, I guess it still will have a seat uh, a sign even if our one passenger is sat over here. Um, I still just would like to get a notification in with regards to this. I may go to the fix page. We'll do it that way. And again, it is based off JFK. Uh, so VOR. So JFK, we'll pop that in there. So is disconnected and bypass bin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. You. All right, so it would appear that it's the uh, course first, then the distance. So we climb on a heading, so not a radial. We just climb on the heading, but we are to intercept the 232 radial until five miles. So let's try that. 232 for five. Can we pop that in? Yes, we can. Uh, and then once we're there, it's left turn to 19 degrees. So we'll switch this back to map view. And there we go. So we're, we're trying. If I assume that vectors is this point here, that's where we're going to try and wind up. Either way, let's think of it this way. We're taking off in a southwesterly direction and we're to be five miles from JFK radial 232, which is basically southwest. And then we left turn to 219 degrees. So it's only a five degree adjustment from 224 to 219. So, you know, very, very minor adjustment. In any case, we've gone through that. get rid of that for now actually let's have a quick look up here so it's like the APU is shut down which is great let's go ahead to put uh, the turn off lights left and right and the nose light into taxi position now we'll do a quick flight controls check so coming down here the uh, config. I thought that one said config. That one said consec. Okay, so pushing the stick forward. See the first officer, what I'm doing. Pull it aft. Rolling left. Rolling right. Left rudder. Right rudder. And I've always been a fan of the, uh, the depiction there turning green when the flight controls are fully deflected. I think that's a nice touch. Okay, stab with regards to the takeoff performance or the uh, such on the takeoff approach page. I think is 5.8 degrees. There we go. We are in the mid. Clearing out the MC. Auto brake, RTO. Speed brake, armed. Parking brake, off. As with it, master caution lights are away. It's like the aircraft has enough power at idle to begin taxiing. I did change that recently with the big update on X-Plane, making the the aircrafts require a lot more thrust to get going. And every aircraft that I've flown since certainly has. I can only assume that this one's got way more thrust than what's required to get it going. Uh, so what we need to do is turn continue the turn on to uh, where we'll be what's this on Charlie or Charlie 2 and then we'll go all the way down let's basically follow it round to the left I can uh, keep my eye on where we're going we're 
working tiller there. Yeah, the thing certainly seems to want to accelerate with no thrust at all. I do just have the uh, two throttles on the Warthog, um, so what I've, I've just got one bound basically to control all three engines. Usually I like to split them, but if I recall correctly, the uh, split throttle plug-in that I sometimes use does not work with this aircraft, so I was unable to basically use two throttles to control more engines independently. For those wondering how is that possible, what the plug-in basically did was it would take your two throttles would control the outer engines and then it would average out what the middle engines are. So in other words, if you put both uh, throttles on full power, clearly the average of full power is still full power, so the middle engines would go full power. But if, say, you were on the ground and you, say, were trying to get around a tight corner and you only raised one throttle, this one would go up however far the other one would stay still and the middle one would be sort of halfway in between which was again it was a fantastic plug-in it's an old one and i did a video on it and i recommend it to anybody that has two throttles obviously if you've got one throttle <laughs> you can't really average it it's going to be one across the board so I've not put on any power yet, and as you can see, we're getting up to 20 knots uh, using the rudder. There we go, to fine-tune my taxi. So let's set the flaps for takeoff. So I believe it's um, up to zero, and zero is just the slats. There you see them coming out. Big slats they are, adding a hell of a lot of curve onto the wing. And then we'll switch to dialer flap, which in today's example is 15.2 uh, degrees. There we go. Of course, it has no passenger window, so I've actually stuck the camera up just outside. By the way, look at that suspension. I love that. The, uh, the, the graphics for the, for the wheels, the detail in that, second to none. And the way that suspension just... I, I always really like the way that they do that. I'm just going to give the uh, wheel brakes a quick squeeze. Actually, see... Actually comes a little lighter. Look at that. Or maybe I'm imagining it, but the front nose wheel certainly seems to bury itself a little bit. Let's give it a go. That's working very well. That's be more obvious from an external view. Nicely done. First time I'm revving the engines a tad. Engine sounds very quiet in the cockpit as you'd expect certainly from engine number two ways ways back left hand then towards the runway I think we'll take this next one here all right so moment of truth then if just break a little bit and there we go get the tiller going let's have a quick look so maps wise if it all goes wrong we'll be heading out over the sea anyway so we'll continue runway heading declare emergency mayday or pan pan and uh, make our way back to runway 22 right for which ILS we have already tuned in. Okay, V2 speeds are there. Can we... I always thought that there was this sort of preset on this aircraft. I'm sure of it. 
on any case. There we go. Whoa! Almost forgot to turn there. Let's put full lock on. Let's have a quick look. Oh, we're just about okay. It's a weird thing with this aircraft. The way it just wants to run away. And there you can see, look how, uh, look how tight that turn is. We're almost over the taxi line by a couple of feet or so. And you can see on full lock, we still turned well inside the width of the taxiway. And anyway, it's coming on. Landing lights are on. Nose light can go off. And high intensity, which are the strobes on this one, can come on. And it's coming down here. Even though we are single player, uh, we'll go ahead and put this into Tara. Which is ironic, because most people call it uh, T-A-R-A. I like to call it Tara. So it's, well, it's the acronym, right? T-A-R-A, it's Tara. And I like to say Tara is goodbye, and I guess when you're taking off, it's adios, isn't it? Goodbye. So Tara in more cases than one. Right. Yeah, there's our... Um, it's not really our intercept point, but we've got the distance there. It's actually ways further to the right. So, two, two, four degrees. When we're five miles away, it's left turn to two, one, nine degrees. And with that, Mad Dog 11, you are clear for takeoff. Runway two, two, right. Nose light on. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, we've got the green bar, so we're good for takeoff. I'm just looking for the clock, which is... That says timer, but you know what? It's better than nothing. There we go. Uh, there we see the timer running. I think you press the auto flight button once to arm the whole system, and that's been pressed. Let's wind them up, and I'll shut up. Flex, we're in 55. The V speeds are on display. Still, what feels like a very spongy and delayed rudder. So, as I'm correcting for the wind, it's much more. There's like a one or two seconds lag between me pressing the pedal and getting the response having to pull back an awful long way on the stick to get the rotation going we'll go for 15 degrees initially i'm going to pull back on the trim a tad more bring the wheels in every time you see the orange bar there like that that's me as you can see here pressing the trimmer so here we are 1100 feet and it would really help me to have the distance information from jfk there but i don't i do have the distance from the ils reading 2.2 want to go to climb thrust it doesn't need to be in takeoff surely we're going to trim down and I'm going to turn left now to 219 and let's go ahead get the autopilot on and we'll pull that one Stabilizer and let's uh, speed up 230 climb thrust is in I think that's actually a little bit more than we had for takeoff thrust, but never mind. Come on, man. I went for open climb and we're actually losing speed here. Altitude. Making our way to 5,000 feet. I'm not sure if I didn't pull the speed out. I thought I did, but.
right with that I'm going to go ahead to get rid of the dial flap you can of course dial the uh, you can actually change this down but this actually changes the angle of the flaps in real time so if you don't quite have enough speed to bring them all the way up but you want them up a bit you can do we can now get rid of the flaps and switch to slats only look at the amount of movement there on the yoke to continue level flight let's go up to 250 and what you have to do on this aircraft it's not just a case of changing the speed you've then got to pull it like thus and with it is the commands to change so it's more like it's much like changing the height and then telling the plane to go do it you know vertical speed or open climb or whatever it's the same here with the speed push the range out oh I beg your pardon I did have access to the VOR that was my bad I should have clicked and I didn't um, but in any case we made the turn well before uh, now so there's Robbinsville so we are approaching so I'm going to assume now we've been cleared up to 24 so we'll again go for the open climb and I'm going to manually vector myself as ATC would to Robbinsville. So let's just call it uh, 245 degrees for now. And we'll pull that. And with it, away she goes. I th actually think we can do away with the slats as well now. So let's get rid of those. I got a weird indicator here for F15. I mean, is that the maximum flap speed? 255. Yeah, okay, so that is the maximum flap speed. So if I had to, I could go for flaps 15. As you can see, slap retract speed was actually ways back there. So it's just the way that you read the band. Got to double check that one, but let's get rid of the slaps. Let's come over to the flight plan page. What I'm going to do now on the direct is Robbinsville. And there's that dotted line. Is that what I want? Double click, I guess, to confirm. And unlike Airbus, we need to then hit nav. So that's much more like the Boeing. Down here, the direct two was like the Airbus, but then you've got to uh, put it into nav mode. Passing through 10,000. And so let's go, I'm just going to go for open climb for now, 300 knots, while we figure some of the rest of it out. So get rid of the nose lights, the landing lights, uh, turn off lights, logo lights, and we're pretty much set for cruise there with it. Signs automatic. So here we go, after our departure from New York 2-2 continued across the ways making our way I think this here is Jersey the Hudson River there we zoom in just about make out the yeah there we go the buildings of Manhattan disappearing as well as the Brooklyn Bridge So there's 300 knots and climbing fast. Look at that, 4,700 feet a minute, which is a massive rate of climb. Don't forget we are a little light on fuel. We could have packed a bunch more in. Now, this is a very sporty aircraft. It does have a high cruise speed as well. Okay, let's see. Oh, no, I don't want to deploy the speed brakes. That was a mistake. I just want to disarm them. There we go. My bad. Or break off let's clear that out which we are going to do so we've got uh, RTO we set that to the off position got an altitude error that's uh, not to concern ourselves with so I do want to go to nav mode so you can see here uh, cruise is top of cruise 320 so we'll go ahead give ourselves 320 and I'm actually going to press the prof button, which I assume is like pushing the altitude in on the Airbus mode or pressing VNAV in a Boeing, I assume. So let's press it. Uh, 
press auto flight because again for some reason it defaults to nav 2 or autopilot 2 now got it on uh, my side again so I'm going to push FMS speed as well and so with it I assume we are in managed mode and what looks like a very high climb speed 335 knots that's much more akin to a very heavily loaded 747 but of course we did have an insanely high cost index thanks to this very strong headwind frame rate as you can see as we leave the city behind us is picking up somewhat so perhaps wasn't the best a place I could have picked for an example but as you can see it's nor is it the 60 frames but we'll see how that goes as the cruise continues and as you can see I am using auto author scenery which to be fair is generally speaking very light on the frame rate it's uh, there are a few notable exceptions to that but in terms of what it looks like well it looks amazing in terms of the module again let's speak about that then it is it looks very good uh, the lighting the shadow the textures you know brilliant sounds leave a little to be desired I dare say heard worse I mean the air the airframe sounds you could hear right now is probably more to do with uh, x-plane realistic uh, if we just have a quick look at this and just check So I say it's uh, XP realistic, but actually, if we take a look here, windshield wind uh, is off. So I'm going to go with um, yeah, no, this is the this is the sound. So yeah. Not bad. Let's say I thought it was XP realistic. All right, let's push the range out and let's focus in on our arrival, which is forget JFK, KIAD. It is, and it was the Hyper Eight, I think. Hyper Eight, and that takes us, and I think it was one nine center approach. One nine center there we go that was it I remember it and then for part three I'll put the airport page on tell you what we'll leave the icon on for today I like to think of it as cheating but uh, for this one we'll not so this top transition as you see is not to scale and nor is this one uh, it where are we coming from can't see it yeah there we go yeah so we are not to scale so that's correct and we have now passed Robbinsville and we are in the arrival so we're on the way between Roberts uh, Robbinsville and hikes that's here uh, it's gonna go to Lancaster then from Lancaster this one here for height restrictions lurch 14,000 I think that's the first one that we need to concern ourselves with and we do have a top of descent marker here and again I'm really curious to see how well the MD-11 now by rotate can bring us down this arrival without basically it used to be when I did it um, the first time, it basically put me out in front of the runway 10,000 feet higher than it should have done. 
and I had to, in order to make sure that didn't happen, basically go open descent or level change uh, from then on. Lots of people complained about it in the forums and so hopefully they've done something about it now and we're about to find out. And so if we take a look here, we can see the heights. And so top of descent to begin somewhere after hikes, somewhere before LRP VOR, which we see there. And if we cycle through, there's Lurch and 14,000 that we were talking about. So that is the first hard restriction. You can see everything else there in small uh, numbers. I was almost said small letters, but the smaller numbers, there's the guesstimated position. In terms of weather, uh, I didn't fill anything in. Uh, looks like this is just generic uh, wind information overall. Uh, I'm just seeing if there is something. Performance page. So we're looking at basically the speed, which is predefined by our cost index in any case. But I'm just seeing... Oh, we do we do have a wind. So if we switch over to page two rather than scrolling down, so that's fairly standard, I dare say. Let's just have a little look at the flight plan and see if we can fill some of this in, because of course we've got a little moment of time before we get there. So we'll switch over to page two. And if we come over to our individual waypoints in the flight plan, I'll just scale that up some. I'll start with the one before our top of descent, which is hikes, and we'll go from there. And so hikes 260 at 73 see if it lets me use that says not allowed yeah I've gone 2604 slash 73 and as you can see we've got the degrees there and um, there are three digits for wind so the only thing I can also suggest is um, 073 and that's still not let me do it and so unless I'm completely missing something here the standard degrees forward slash speed is not working uh, let's try the next one, 260 at 73 under uh, LRP. No, it's not letting me do it. What if I just click? It says not allowed. What if I click here? Is there anything else? Um, we've got star, holes, airways and next waypoints. New destination, enable alternates and return but actually nothing with regards to wind. And so it appears that you can't load wind information in. At least I'm not seeing it. And the one page where you think you could type it in doesn't actually work. Takeoff approach then. So it's already switched over to the approach at KIAD or Washington Dulles for nine center. Uh, it's got the speeds in here. We have the choice between, uh, I think, flaps 28 or 30, or sorry, 35 or flaps 50. Uh, 35 gives us an approach speed of 155, and if we go flaps 50, that drops it down to 149. We'll go with 149 just because and what I'm going to do on my dialer flap is just set this back to about 15 degrees so that when we uh, dump it on our way down I'm not sure in real life if they would go dialer flap and start at the top and then gradually scroll it down and then switch on to the next flap or if generally speaking they just sort of pick a middle of the road value like 15 and uh, leave it at that. I don't know. What I do know is that we're getting right on top of top of descent. 
I'm not sure what these altitude errors are about because, as you can see, we're still outside the top of descent, which is now about 10 miles away. So, height-wise... Actually, not in there. Let's uh, switch back to the uh, airport charts. So I'm going to dial 14,000 because that's our first stop. I do like this little arrow here. shows where you're going to be at the height. So that is, again, that little arrow is much more Airbus-y than it is Boeing. But it's nice to see an actually update in near real time. It's like a second or so behind, which is probably how it really is. But that's great to see. And I like how it tracks the flight path. So I assume if we were to double back on ourselves in the flight path, you'd actually see this blue arrow uh, tracking that back, which is actually a minor advantage when it comes to Airbus versus the Boeing, which just has the arc. Although the arc, I think, does look better, let's face it. Right, 14,000. And then after that, we'll just drop that all the way down to our final approach fix. So let's see, first of all, does this track the descent without any further intervention? Yes, it does. So it's not like the Boeing where you actually need to press something to initiate the descent. It does it, providing you've pre-set uh, the window to do so. So I want to leave this, in terms of energy management, down to the autopilot to see how well it does it. I'm going to already preset the FAF. So this, as you see, takes us all the way down to the runway 19 center. So we've got a point at 2.7 and then at 1.5. My only question is, which would be our FAF? And it's 1.5, there we see it. So I'm gonna dial 1.5 in and see how the autopilot does that. I would love to do the river river visual arrival on this one into DCA, the Ronnie Reagan. It's a fun approach to do. It is, of course, as well as being a visual approach, fully arnaved up now, so you can do the the visual as an arnav, which I just feel that this aircraft is a little bit too big for that airfield. You can, of course, do it, but it's. Pushing the boundary some, taking a look how we're we doing, trending a little bit high. But nothing to be concerned about. Does progress show us anything with regards to descent? Um, doesn't appear to. Reckons we've got 107 miles to go. So I would argue that's a slightly early descent, but that could, of course, just be based on what the arrival stuff says. One thing I never did, because just I was being lazy, was actually check that visually our whole route connects properly. And as you can see, it's all the way into hyper and then straight on into final no messing around we already checked that there was no discontinuities but as we can see there that just makes a lot of sense it's straight in back to the map page oh one thing i did want to do before i forget uh, just to see if it works and how self-explanatory it was the fuel dumping so the fuels here and again if we want to change anything on any of these you've got to press the system button so for example I want to turn pack 2 off as you can see it doesn't work but I do get this flashing light over here which is great because if people have a memory like mine that reminds you oh yeah you can't actually do anything until you press this one here so we're going to go ahead press manual now that's indicated now we can turn pack 2 off get rid of bleeds air from engine number one 
and so forth. And I think if you think, oh my goodness, those yellow scary lights look yellow and scary, you can just press that button again, turns the automatic system back on, and once you know, it sorts itself out, which is a beautiful feature of the MD-11. Can't believe they had such an automated thing ways back when, and I really like that Rotate have captured that side of things so well. Less talking, more doing. Fuel system manual. So we've got this drain button here. Here's the dump switch. So if I open the cover, I suppose this is if you're plugged in, but I don't don't quote beyond that. Like you could pump fuel out the tanks down a tube back into the airport in some way. I assume that's what that is. And this here is, you know, throw it overboard. So let's try it on. And it may be that I have to open a few valves, but dump switch on. Not seeing anything, and certainly the fuel not draining as quickly as you might. Hang on, 815. Oh, it is draining. Look at it now. 850, 8,000 across the board, 7,950. So it is, it's as simple as just pressing the dump switch. And although there's no visual indication that we're throwing fuel overboard, as you can see, we're losing... What's that? About 50 pounds every couple of seconds per tank. There's three tanks, so we're chucking... What, I'm just balling it here. 70, 80 pounds of fuel a second. So we'll turn the dump switch off. So nice to see fuel dump is implemented even though there's no uh, real graphic there. And with that, we'll go ahead and put that back to automatic. Well, looks like Autopilot's doing a fantastic job. Uh, Speed-wise, it's exactly where it wants us to be, 338. And height-wise, we're, we're bang on where it wants us to be also. ILS-wise, I'm not sure if it auto-tunes, but we did have JFK tuned in, so 11.30. So before I forget, let's adjust that here. Again, it may be automatic, but I don't want to risk it. So 11.30.191. And code India Delta Lima X-Ray. Check. Also have the option for localizer only. I guess if your glide slope is out. And then down here is uh, VOR. And what I'm going to do is clear those out. And I assume that sets it to automatic. But of course it could have been automatic all along. I'm sure LRP was tuned in before I looked down there. So maybe uh, it was auto-tuning in any case. Okay. So coming in here, that looks great. 14,000 feet at lurch. And as you can see, that's just moments away. We're at 16.7, so if we scale down, that's what's that? Seven, eight miles to go. Two and a half thousand feet to do it in. Sounds very much like a three to one descent profile. Alt error at inter. Joe, I keep seeing these alt error messages and. Stabilizer motion. Oh, one of those horrible lag spikes where the sound goes, where I think, oh my goodness, is it going to crash? Thankfully, it doesn't. I've had X Plane 12 crash on me once in the last six months, which is a pretty good record. Um, but it has happened, so. Gotta say, this scenery is breathtaking. I mean, auto ortho scenery doesn't always do an amazing job, but when it does, it really does. Just look at that. Fantastic. Of course, the weather effects and the haze and whatnot look great. 
I am toying with the idea of having a go with that uh, cloud weather add-on. Do of course need to pay for it, but the only problem with weather add-ons is every time there's an X-Plane update, generally speaking, they break and you're entirely dependent on the add-on developer maintaining compatibility. And all too often I've seen add-on developers just give up on maintaining add-ons. One of which was my Inibuilds A310, which I got terrible value of money for. Spent some, what was it, something like $84 or $85, I can't quite remember now, it was a lot. And then can't have flown it more than four or five times. Before X-Plane 12 came out, they said all along they was going to update it. They never gave a date for it. And here we are, well over a year after X-Plane 12, and they've still not done so. They did apparently make the A300 model updated, which is a shame because the A310 was their newest aircraft, as in the latest one that they released. So you'd think if the, if they were going to update one, it would be the their newest unfortunately not. I hope I'm not mixing A300 and A310 up there, the Airbus, because that was a decent module. Of course, they then went and developed the exact same thing for Flight Sim 2020. If you take a look at the cockpit model and textures, it was exactly the same. And it just leaves you feeling horrible taste in your mouth. So here we go. We are at 11.6. Now that could be that I never went standard on the barrow. I pull standard. I don't know because of course, yeah, I did forget, but still not tuned in at Washington. But in either way, it's 11,200. We're, we're below 18 anyway, so we would still be local. So I take that back. In the absence, uh, let's have a look actually. Are we in range of Washington? Yeah, probably not, but we'll dial it in just in case. Atis 3485. Center three, zero, four, four. Arrive, runways, one, nine, right, one, nine, center. Wow, it's actually loud enough to hear. 10 points for that. Washington Dulles International Information Alpha. 19, 20, Zulu. Wind 2, 1, 0 degrees and 6 knots. Visibility more than 10 miles. Sky conditions view at 24,500. Temperature 7, 2 point minus 4. Altimeter 3, 0, 4, 4. Arrive at runways 1, 9, right. 1, 9, center. Departing runways 1, 9, center. 1, 9, left. Okay, so there we go. So it's nice to know that 19 Center is still good for approach. Uh, very high pressure again, 3044. Uh, we did get the wind information, but uh, unlike uh, Airbus, doesn't seem really to care for the winds in, in here. And again, there was no way. I thought maybe on the approach it might want to know. But uh, I, it doesn't look like it, does it? Fix. Uh, let's change this to. I assume there will be something at Washington. There is Armel thirteen fifty AML. There we go. Well, that soon crept up on us, and then there is an intercept. I'm just. Going to put one in 90 degrees off, so 191, uh, just to get it out of the way uh, in case it does draw on the screen. Let's have a little look. Actually doesn't, so that's great. Okay, I don't think we... Oh, we do just need to get the minimums out of this, and it's uh, typical ILS 200 feet, so minimums. Rad out is selected. And they see RA actually default to 200, which is great. Usually aircraft defaults to 50 or 100, so it's nice to have that. Because I 
Unless there's a reason not to, I, I, I always just go category one ILS. Dropping through 10 then, we're at 9,300, so I should really have had the lights on, but you know what I like to say, better late than never. Uh, we'll put the seatbelt signs on, turn off lights are on, we'll put the logo on as well. And so that leaves the nose light, which will be uh, clear to land. We actually have a wing light. And I'm not seeing it. Unless the wing light is somehow combined with the turn off light, which appears like it might be actually. So I'll take that back too. Yeah, so you can see these VOR beacons are auto updating. So it's auto dialing. So in this case, we've got EMI. Interesting, it's got both VORs, and I saw that before on the same beacon. Usually, you, if there's more, you get uh, one side differing from the other side, and it uses the VOR positions literally to triangulate the bearings to confirm aircraft position. Usually. Look at the haze, man. You can barely see unless we look up or to the side. I remember that from, you know, doing aerobatics as well. And the Air Cadets was one of the great things actually about cadets doing aerobatics. Flying into the sun, just how hazy it was versus when you look, say, to the side and it, or flying the other way. And it was like you could see two or three times as far. And they've actually captured that really well here. So I have to say, man, this approach is going particularly well. Uh, this circle here is 20 nautical miles, so we can say the runway is probably less than 30 now, 25 to 30 miles. Uh, MRB states 20 nautical miles, so that was uh, MRB. No, AML is what we're looking for. And again, I do just wonder how... Let's just manually put AML in my side. And... No, it's still got MRB in on both sides. And so what this is for down here... Maybe it's just for a standby ALS only. I don't know. So I suspect... At 200 and some, it's ready for the slats. And so let's give it slats... altitude we are still descending that's the flight plan page cover 7000 we've just gone through that so Dimki looks like the next one is Hoser 5000 that's not far ahead gotta say man the autopilot seems loads better versus before there was that minor little weird thing on departure but that could have just been me and my you know, lack of experience in the mad dog, let's call it that. But overall, this is at least what I've seen of it, that sim ready, as I like to say. Airport page, I'm a big fan of, again, I know I've said it before, but just having this here, and again, you've got the options here for all the different map types. And then the lower graph is of uh, Navigraph is of course assuming you have the subscription, but it's but even if you don't, you know you can still get access to this here. You zoom out, you've got the options here for my aircraft. You could of course ask for VORs and uh, grab frequencies like that ILS and whatnot accordingly. So it is possible. switch back to uh, Navigraph. Back to the airports page. So here we are then on final approach. There's Hoser. As you can see, we've got a very high angle of attack here with 10 degrees just to fly level. 
and ways, ways off the stall speed, apparently. Apparently, we could lose, look at that, another 25 knots before getting into the protected band. And that little difficult to believe when we're at 10 degrees. Nose over now as we continue our descent. So let's go ahead and dial a flat 15. And with it, smoking signs go on, so that was automatic. Uh, so slats do not trigger the smoking signs, but flaps do. Go ahead and turn that on. Auto brake then, so let's get some of this stuff squared away. So runway 19 center is 11.5 and we need to be, uh, let's call it ways off at the end there for the cargo. Uh, I don't know the airport layout, but I'm just going to assume that. And so with it, uh, auto brake minimum. To make use of the runway speed coming back nicely and looks like ILS is there we go IDLX let's just confirm that uh, IDLX it is so we are identified so I'm going to go ahead and arm the approach so approach land one press localizers captured and we're still descending in below the profile Look at the speed, we're right on that. 28. I wonder at what point do we get the alarm that the gear's not down, but it seems we can go flaps 28. Look at the speed here. And if we come back to the takeoff page, we should be looking at uh, 149 at flaps full. So it's actually brought us to 153 with flaps 28. So I perhaps question that a little bit. Again, it's done that in managed mode. So I think what I'm going to do is just give myself a little bit of extra speed because it's a crazy high angle of attack. Don't forget to then pull it again every time you make that adjustment. We have now grabbed the glide slope. So we'll pull this in. We do actually have an approach page, so let's hit that one. That's it. I do prefer the uh, plan view, I have to say. The regular one. Stabilizer motion. Okay, 3,000 feet and runway a little inside 10 miles. Uh, five miles, so we're going to dump the gear. How is it five miles? We're at 3,000 feet. 2,500. Because it's not five miles, it is nearer 10. <laughs> I was confusing Femco with the runway. By goodness, get yourself another channel idea. Gear down. I love that, by the way. Did you see that? The left gear took longer than the right. And that is, you know, in real life, when you see any video, one is almost always slightly quicker than the other, whether it's by a split second or sometimes two or three seconds. And all too often in uh, X-Plane or Flight Sim, it's like you see the nose go first and then all the gear mains pretty much in sync or certainly left and right always at the same time and so it's real nice to see a slight discrepancy there all right let's go flaps 35 with it angle of attack goes down some so i'm going to drop it like to 160. and we'll assume now washington clears us to land runway is in sight so with that nose light on. What's the timer doing? I always forget to turn the timer off. So we're at 42 minutes and 20 seconds. Let's just have a quick peek over here. In fact, let's go flaps full. And final approach speed. So, uh, we'll go for 149. Oh, should we go 150 because of the angle of attack here? Now oh, let's do what it says. 149, bang. Ref is 44. Yeah, so if we come over here to our chart, which is our flight plan, really. Uh, what does it say with regards to flight time? 47 minutes was in the plan. Look at this, it's taking us 43 it's going to be 44, maybe 45 by the time we vacate the runway and stop the timer. So that's very close. We've actually, uh, I think it's with our very high speed of flight. 
so auto flight disconnect autopilot 500. and I've disconnected the autopilot there so straight away I gotta say the trim is too far after so the autopilot disconnects and it balloons so when you disconnect the autopilot be prepared to nose down somewhat approaching minimum still doing it somewhat There we go. Deploy the reverses. Did I remember to arm the spoilers? Oops. actually came to a complete stop much quicker than I expected considering we were auto brake minimum I was hoping to get a little bit of a cinematic I bad by the way with regards to the uh, spoilers that's why I should use checklists I know I'm against them but I guess there's why I shouldn't be all right let's get rid of the flaps and stop the timer so there we go, yeah, 45 minutes, 9 seconds. Uh, so we'll go see if we can get near that 747 runway vacated. And so yeah, let's come up here and request APU power. Whoa, gotta keep remembering this thing likes to taxi fast. Got a CG disagreement message. We're not gonna worry about that. We are gonna worry about getting nose lights, landing lights off. And the uh, high intensity strobe light off. Wonder to ground mode. Yeah, so frame rate here again down into the 30s. So it's definitely one of the more or one of the most taxing on the frames, I have to say. It's uh it's actually you know, and I'm trying to think the, 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 the only other one that I can really think it compares to is the 747 by Felix. And I have to say, the 747 by Felix, I actually think, performs a little better than this one now. Um, he did update that at some point, and there was an improvement in performance. So when I'm trying to think of all the modules that I own, this is probably... Probably the worst in terms of frame rate. And as I take a look at my keyboard, which is uh, set up at the front, the right half of it shows me, just by the colour of the light, the temperature of the graphics card. The left side, the temperature of the processor, the graphics card is green. So, you know, the, the only way it could be cooler than that is if it, if it was blue. And the processor is a yellowish orange, and so it goes deep orange before it red, so... And again, you may just say that's just X-Plane. And maybe it is. So if I just tell you... Uh, task manager-wise... Uh, X-Plane is currently using 9% of the processor and in terms of graphics card uh, 
Uh, power usage very high, but uh, coming down, just having a quick look at the uh, graphics cards. It's actually using 60 to 70 percent, and you know, I do have the RTX 4090, so it's actually X Play making decent use of the graphics card, even if the processor is being very underutilized. And I suspect the modules use more processor than a graphics card, but of course, having a lot of cores, X Plane certainly isn't making use of them all. At least not very effectively in this particular aircraft. All right, I realize we are coming in at a gate and we've got a cargo uh, loadout, but it's worth a test to see if it works. APU says it's available, so we'll go ahead to grab it for the bleed as well. And there you can see, so that was a test there. If you saw, I was able to slow the aircraft down and smoothly stop it. You just wind it back five or ten seconds. You'll see that's what I did. Now, that is a huge thing. I did that deliberately because there are so many modules where you get below a certain speed and there's this sort of jerky, lurchy motion between doing like one or two knots and standing still. It's like you can't slow down smoothly. I don't know why that's such a difficult thing, but... Apparently it is. It appears that Rotate and the MD-11 have got that right. Okay, so with that, we'll get the parking brake on. There we go. Uh, clear out the MC. Coming up top, so again, ground power is already on, so I suspect the tax light should have really had that off while we are coming into gate, but there we go. It's done now. And so with it, I'm just going to go three, or oh, sorry, two, three, one. Uh, transponder will pop that into standby mode and get rid of the signs uh, beacon light will get rid of that too so the automated stuff has done well here so really three two one nav systems are off APUs supplying the bleed and the power. I think that's fine. I don't think we need to do anything else there. What I do want to do, though, is coming over to the left-hand side. I definitely need to uh, bind my thing. A little bit better for that view. Where I keep viewing the uh, tablet here when I'm trying to actually view the left side. Because ground ops, I just want to finish off with this. Uh, so we'll request the chocks. I'm not going to ask for stairs because I'm going to see if we can get the gateway to come out again. It's a minor thing, but just to see if it does work. Um, uh, we'll open the cargo doors. Uh, we'll turn the lights on back there. So let's just open the cockpit door. And let's see if the... Uh, hey, look at that, the animation. I love that. And so let's see if the default X-Plane gate comes using the regular commands. And actually, we don't have it. It could just be that this is not a supported gateway or the aircraft is way off. But I suspect it's probably because it's not been implemented. But, uh, don't hold me to that. And so based on that, we will use the built-in uh, cockpit stairs. There we go. I'm not going to connect ground power unit because that's going to be it from me. And so let's have a look what we can do with the right order. So APU bleed, let's disappear that. Get rid of the emergency lights. Uh, logo light off. Uh, nav lights off. Off, 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 off. So let's get rid of APU power. That disappears. And so it's standby power and battery to go. And so I suspect in real life you would be waiting for the uh, APU to power down, I guess in case there was a fire. But of course I could 
just be talking twaddle and so what I'm going to go ahead and do is get rid of the standby power because it is not real life battery off close to cover we hear the inverters and whatnot wind themselves down and with it for me here on internet flight rules with the MD-11 here at Washington Dulles International I have to say a massive improvement compared to what this was again all the autopilot stuff and the change log to do with the engine power and the way the autopilot works specifically with the vertical navigation aspect it appears to be completely sorted again i dropped us down from cruise down to the final approach fix and the autopilot had us all the way there i do question why it was so keen to slow us down as much as it did on the final approach but you know what do i know maybe that's the way it was with the md11 and you're expected to go manual speed uh in terms of performance that's really the only major criticism i have for this module the performance the frame rate as you see there is literally half what you would get if you were using the zebo 737 or the Tolis aircraft, you would expect to see those, at least on my system, doing 60 frames per second most of the time. Um, and yeah, so until next time, from me, wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Until next time, take care. ta -ra. That right there, I think, no, where are we? I think that right there is going to be the screenshot. See ya.